Welcome back to DS Trucks. In today's video, I want to talk about mistakes that I made with this truck, with my 2019 F250, and why it's costing me so much money today. So, when I bought this truck, I had some weird issues. I could hear water moving around inside of the truck, and I just couldn't figure out what was going on so i kind of ignored it for a little while for a couple weeks and then we rolled right into winter i got this truck i think i got this truck in the winter and we very quickly had a snow plow on the truck and we very quickly put this truck to work now after a while i realized that something wasn't right with this noise with this water slosh around inside of the truck so i finally pulled up the plastic trim and did confirm that this seal plate down in here was actually full of water underneath there soaking the harness so i immediately drained the water out probably with the vacuum or something and i uh obviously kept working the truck but eventually i made it to the dealer and the dealer could not find any leaks and i'm thinking surely there's there must be a leak somewhere in the truck it's full of the water they couldn't find anything they tried and tried and tried they couldn't find anything so i assumed that since there's no leaks on the truck that somehow i was bringing this water into the truck with my shoes working in snow and all that you drag water in and out well this was the start of chasing a water leak down for years you know i got this truck in 2018 it's now 2023 and it has been basically leaking water that entire time and it's finally gotten to the point where it's knocked out the radio on the truck uh it at one point the hvac stopped working and all that other stuff i got that working but the radio just won't power on and it's because I was unable to get this truck repaired under warranty. Now it's out of warranty. Now, what ended up happening? What ended, where, did it, where did the water leak end up coming from? Basically, what I found after the truck sat, we had a slow winter. And it sat out in the rain, didn't get driven. And I knew, like, it's definitely not coming from my feet. At that point, I had confirmation that it wasn't coming from my feet the truck wasn't even driven because it just rained it has to be having a water leak somewhere so we ended up pressurizing the cab we covered up the rear vents where the air escapes from the cab we turned on the hvac to put air positive pressure in the cab and we checked everything we checked the the uh marker lights on top the clearance lights on top we checked the windows and everything the windshield I mean everything and it really threw me off because there was no leaks like I understand how the dealer came back with no leaks like there wasn't any so what did I what I ended up doing is I could see the water coming in soaking the driver's side floor puddles underneath the rubber because the rubber once it gets wet it holds moisture underneath it puddles underneath the rubber what i ended up doing is saying hey there's got to be something i pulled off the the wiper arms i pulled off this plastic trim on here and exposed the uh windshield the bottom seal underneath this and you would never think that uh leak low underneath all this trim pointing down could be causing that but that's what i found you could clearly see when i pulled this all apart that the glue the the urethane sealant that is installed from the factory was misaligned a little bit you can see it at the machine or robot that 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 puts that uh urethane glue down for the windshield missed a little bit it was hanging out and then I went to turn around and pressurized the cab again because everything was still taken apart. And I confirmed 
that, in fact, there was a leak on the bottom of that windshield. Air pressure was coming out of it, and it was bubbling. So I just bought some urethane. I bought a tube, bought a tube of urethane, and just shoved it in there, pumped it in there, and it seems to have corrected the, corrected the problem. Uh, I freaked out a little bit a couple weeks ago because I kind of felt underneath the carpet there, and it was still damp. But I think that's just a product of having a rubber floor where it will just stay damp no matter what. It stays damp because it's a rubber floor. So that is the mistake I made was not really pressing the dealer in order to get them to cover this issue. That if you're having this type of a water issue, I mean, the dealer's going to kick it back to you. They're going to blame it on you. And I just, being so busy and having so many different things on my plate, I just didn't have the time, the energy, the perseverance to fight with the dealer. And honestly, I just didn't know. I didn't know if it was really me bringing water in with my shoes or I just couldn't figure it out. So I did a number of different things. I chased this water leak down, but ultimately I really should have held the dealer to the fire. And Honestly, guys, my diagnosing skills were not there at the time in order to figure out where this water leak was coming from. And it really came down to having enough time and energy to get this plastic cover off. One of the things that hung me up right away, like I look at this and it's not that complicated, but I don't know how to get, take these freaking wiper motor or wiper blades off of here. But quick Google search and it showed how to do it. Not a big deal. And then maybe 20 minutes of work to get that thing off. It really wasn't even hard. So I'm kicking myself in the butt for not really knowing how to fix this. But also not knowing about the trick of, of the positive pressure inside of the cab where you cover up the exhaust vents. These vents back here, um, they're between here and they let the pressure. So when you shut the door... If you didn't have that little exhaust flap right here, the door wouldn't shut. It would always kind of have a little air pressure on it when you shut it. it pop your ears and stuff like that. You can feel the pressure. Like you turn on the HVAC and it pulls the fresh air into the truck. And you sit in there, but you got those vents covered up. You can feel all that pressure like messing with your eardrums a little bit because it's putting a positive pressure inside of the cab. So that's how I found the leak. It's not something that I... I mean, I just thought of it, kind of, and it did seem to work. But honestly, once this cover was removed, I did confirm that it was leaking using positive pressure. But you could see that the rubber seal, the rubber uh, urethane, I don't even think it's rubber. I think it's urethane that seals the windshield. You could see clearly that that was missing. Now, I could have and I should have probably just went ahead and ripped out the whole windshield and did it. But I'm kicking but I'm kicking myself in the butt for not having this done or the warranty. That being said, it probably would have been covered if I would have went to the dealer still, even maybe out of warranty. But there's just so much going on with it that I've already touched it. That's kind of mine now. Like for the warranty to really kick in, they have to be the ones that fix it. And now that I've kind of tampered with it. It may be on me now. Now, the issue that I have now is that it knocked out the stereo. And how much money and Diag and all that will it cost me to fix the freaking stereo on the truck? I don't know what module got hit. Maybe the amplifier got wet. Maybe something. I don't, I don't know. So my mistake is not having the right kind of a standard operating procedure or right way of dealing with the dealer and dealing with Ford and really pressing about it, having other things more pressing than getting this truck fixed. And now I got to pay. You know, I've already had to deal with the windshield issue. Not a ton of money there, but to fix the stereo is going to be some money. Although for a work truck, not a huge deal because you don't particularly need a stereo in a work truck. Actually better. It's actually better without the stereo. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to talk to you real quick about this. If you guys are having these water issues, these water leak 
issues. There's ways to figure it out. I feel confident now that I can find any water leak on a Ford pickup. F-150, Super Duty. If it's going to the dealer, they're not able to find it. I am confident that I could find that water leak. But uh, for future reference for me, and hopefully this video can help you, hold the dealer to it. Make them fix their problems. Make Ford fix their problems. And don't eat the cost like I did because that was messed up. But anyway, my name is Sean. This is DS Trucks. See you guys in the next video. We got to get to work. It's early morning before the sunrise. So let me get this video out and see you guys in the comments section. Over and out.